everyone, this is Game Spots, and today we'll be doing another great tutorial video where today we are going to learn how to use the NVIDIA Control Panel to boost up your graphics card without overclocking it. So if you have any new graphics card that you bought but you don't really want to overclock your card, um, there is um, an, uh, many options in the NVIDIA Control Panel in which you can help boost the, um, your graphics card. I know there has been many tutorial videos about it, but I want to make sure that this one is as clear as possible. So the first thing you need to do is to right click using your mouse and press NVIDIA Control Panel. Um, so what you need to do now, um, you have to wait until a video control panel uh, pops up. So it might take some time depending on your system. Now the next thing you need to do first if you if your card supports PhysX, which PhysX is basically um an API for like let's say for advanced physics and like certain games and you know it kind of helps the card that uh for games that support PhysX. I don't think not that many games does it. I don't know. But the first thing you need to do is to select a physics proce processor and press um your um your graphics card do not select um cpu and then you have to press apply the apply button should appear right here now the next thing to do is to go straight to manage 3d settings now this right here it might be a lot of stuff but trust me it will work so the first thing you need to do ambient occlusion is basically for like um realism for like sh for shadows and stuff um you have to press um performance uh, or you could just turn it off if you want to disable um, certain um, realistic shadows. But for, for me, I choose performance. Next, for um, an anistotrophic filtering, I think that's what they call it. Um, you could turn it off if you don't want any. But um, it I, for me, I leave that application controlled because at certain games, uh, like let's say light games, I, um, if, if they want it, I could just um, turn it on. But you could leave this one on uh, application controller off. Now for FXAA, I want you to turn that off. Gamma correction, leave that on. Um, it, gamma correction, um, it has no performance in, um, impact. It just increases the image quality and that's about it. Anti-aliasing mode, um, you could keep that application control or leave it off. Do not press enhance or override. If you press enhance on um, the games that, um, that support anti-aliasing, um, if you, um, it can go up to a, about 32 times and it will actually make a big impact to your card. So just turn it application controller off. Next thing, uh, for transparency, turn that off. CUDA, um, press all, um, PSR factors. Now, if you have a, a graphics card that is, um, the GTX 600 series or higher, it will support DSR factors. Now, what DSR factors is is basically like uh, giving you a higher resolution for your for your outdated monitor. I'm just saying, like right now, my monitor is 1440 by 900 with DSR factors. Um, I could up the resolution by about like let's say 1920 by 1200 or even more. But I turned that off because I, it does improve image quality, but it really impacts your graphics card performance now for the maximum pre-render frames i want you to turn it to one now what that does is that let's say if you have a heavy game a very heavy game and your graphics card is running at max speed but your fps or your frame rate is very low with this what it does is that when you turn it from four to one it will make your game less choppy so let's say if you have 15 uh, frames per second uh, with 15 frames per second, your game will be choppy at some point, but with maximum pre-render frames, if you turn it down to 1, it would be less choppy, and it actually will result in smoother gameplay. But, what it does is that, um, I don't know, but if you just leave it as 1, it will be really good. So, as you can see... It says reduce this value if you experience a delay in response while playing game. I think that's what it says right here. Okay. Now the next thing you should do 
is uh actually i think i'm wrong because the premium is saying they say increasing the value yeah i forgot you have to leave it up to four i'm sorry guys leave it up to four i almost got um i almost got confused so you gotta leave it up to four um uh, especially with virtual reality so if you have a virtual reality supported card um my card is not vr ready but if you have like a gtx 900 series or higher i believe like a gtx 960 um i think it's vr ready and if you leave it up to four so if your game is choppy um yeah it'll, um it'll work but the problem with um pre-rendered frames is that if you crank it up to four um your input there will be more input lag but it's worth it open geo on rendering gpu what you need to do is press auto select or you could just press your graphics card i would just leave that auto select because it already knows what my graphics card is now this is a game changer so power management mode always leave that to um, prefer maximum performance that will actually help a lot shader cache leave that on because if you enable it um it will reduce shutter and improve load times texture filming it says sample optimization leave that on um negative lod bias just leave uh, allow texture filtering quality now what you can do is that so basically the textures of your game now if you put in high performance the textures would look not really realistic as you think in the game that's why nvidia leaves it at quality default but if you want the um the best performance and if you don't really care about um, quality much you could just press high performance and that would actually help sometimes i get like five to ten more fps because of it um trilinear optimization leave that on threaded optimization now what does that what does that do basically if you have like a multi-core um, processor like let's say four cores six cores and stuff it will actually help the games to take advantage of multiple processors to actually help i mean help ease your graphics card because sometimes let's say if it's if the game is cpu intensive you gotta leave that on like let's say grand theft auto or i don't know minecraft um you can leave that on so it can help ease the gpu at some point uh triple triple buffering now what does that do is that it improves performance when you leave vsync on now vertical sync is basically um a, a thing where um if you turn it on it will redo actually it will eliminate screen tearing like let's say if you go up to 60 frames um sometimes when the screen tears you have to turn on vsync to eliminate that but if you don't really care about screen tearing um the best thing this is basically the best thing to put your graphics card on that 99% mark you turn that off and but you have to also um, turn off triple buffering as well now um, if you turn off vertical sync what will happen is that your screen will tear but your frame rates will go really really high sometimes like over above 120 or 150 or whatever because like it's just remember it uh v-sync or vertical sync basically locks your monitor's refresh rate or hertz like let's say 60 hertz it just stays there 60 fps 60 hertz whatever uh to eliminate screen tearing if you turn that off it'll basically like your graphics card will go on max power so you press apply now i am not done yet because this um um this tutorial also has another um trick now people have been i think people have seen like when our monitors are being overclocked well basically you can actually overclock your monitor or put it into a higher refresh rate like what i did so in my 1440 by 900 monitor it's basically 60 frames but now i changed the refresh rate to 75 hertz that mean my graphics card will go only go up to 75 frames per second now in order to do that what you need to do is to press customize and press custom uh, create custom resolution but before you press that button you have to um, check this right here enable resolution is not exposed by the display when you click when you click custom resolution it'll give you this now forget about progressive forget about color depth and stuff like that what you need to do is to change your refresh rate or hertz 
why mine go up to 75 is because when I go over it will not detect the display because it's too overboard so all you need to do you have to only for me what you could do is go by 10 or 15 and just test you just press test to see if your monitor can support that refresh rate and it's pretty pretty awesome so let's say if you have a 4k display um, like let's say 4k uh, 50 hertz monitor well if you want a full 60 fps experience you could overclock it and you'll have six, uh, 60 fps so that's all I got to say today uh, if you guys like this tutorial please leave a like and if you want to see more you can click the subscribe button so you, and click the notification bell icon so you never miss any other video um, so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye everybody and have a great day